Hey what's up guys it's Kelly and today I'm sharing some recent reads. If you find yourself enjoying this video then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up it really helps me out and if you're new here and would like to see more of me then please subscribe. So as you can see I have no bookshelves behind me although I'm kind of liking this setup. <laughs> That's because we're currently moving, well we're packing up to move, so that's why I've been pretty quiet and probably will continue to be pretty quiet. I have some time today so I'm going to try to pre-film enough to cover me until we're like settled in our new place. It's, it's probably going to be on and off still for the next few weeks, I'm hoping to be back on track by the beginning of August. So there's that, and then also recent reads, my aim is that I'm normally going to do like three to four books in each video. Normally the idea is that they're going to act as like a mid-month wrap-up. However today, as I'm setting the precedent for this, I have seven books to talk about which is, you know, fantastic. But there are some that I'll talk about very quickly for reasons that you'll understand. So since I do have a sizable number of books to get through, I will just get straight into them. First up is Wonder Woman Warbringer by Leigh Bardugo. This is the first book in the DC Icon series and I got this about two years ago. I actually did an unboxing of the book box where I got this, which I'll leave a link to. Yeah, I got it about two years ago and I've, it has been on countless TBRs. Like you guys are probably sick of me saying I'm gonna read this book and then not reading it, but I did finally read it. I buddy read it with a friend of mine at work and it was okay. I didn't love it. I was definitely expecting to like it more, especially given how much I love Lee Bardugo and how much I love DC. I was, yeah, just kind of expecting more from it. It was good, it wasn't bad, like, there's nothing I can pinpoint about it that was terrible, I just, it didn't grip me, the pacing at times felt a little bit off, but the writing was nice, the characters were fun for the most part, although there were one or two that were annoying, there was one character that completely blindsided me, so I was impressed by that. The writing is not as lyrical and descriptive as I find Lee Bardugo's normally is. It was fine overall, and I'm going to give it a fine rating of 3 because it was okay. Then I'm 99% sure that I did actually put this book on my May TBR. I think I <laughs> someone even commented on like how, how cute it was, how excited I got when I received this book. This was one of my most anticipated releases of the year. I was so excited for it. It's a contemporary which is just shocking, and if you haven't already guessed what it is, it was The Boy Who Steals Houses by C.G. Drews. I still haven't actually read A Thousand Perfect Notes, so I had no precedent for being this excited for the book apart from just being told about it. Like just when I heard the storyline, it just felt like something that was really going to speak to me and that I was going to love so much, and I absolutely did. So this is about a boy called Sam who he and his brother Avery have kind of been abandoned by every adult in their lives, and Sam lives his life by stealing houses. So every night he breaks into a stranger's house and although it is partly to steal from the houses, so he'll steal electronics or whatever so that he can sell them to have money for food or to help out his brother or whatever the case may be, it's more about stealing the houses themselves. He just wants to have a place where he feels safe for the night, where he has a bed to sleep in, where he can feel like he's at home for one night because home is something that he's never really had. Right from that description it gave me so many feelings and the feelings continued the whole way through the book. This was such a roller coaster of emotions. Sam and Avery as well are just such precious sweet soft boys although Avery had moments throughout the book that he really upset me. Sam consistently although I had moments of being really disappointed in him consistently he just was the sweetest sweetest small bean like I have to protect him, he's my son, and I just want him to be happy and safe and loved. So the crux of the story comes when one day Sam st decides to steal the wrong house, and while he is napping in an upstairs chair, the family arrives home and he's kind of stuck there with this family that has arrived home and he is still inside their house. As he tries to sneak out, he gets caught. But this family is so big and so chaotic that everyone just assumes that he's meant to be there, everyone assumes that he is one of the kid's friends. And then through a series of events he ends up like kind of staying with his family and I can't, I don't want to tell you too much about how things happen because spoilers, but yeah he ends up having this place finally where he feels like he's at home but at the same time he's lying to this family who's been so good to him, who's taken him in and they don't realize that he's still staying there. It's just a really emotional read, it's a really beautiful read, it's a book for anyone who's ever felt out of place, out of their depth, 
it's just a really really magical story and oh, the friendships in this book the relationship in this book is so sweet and so pure and just Sam's relationship with the entire Delaney family from the dad to all of the kids is just so beautiful and so precious and if you haven't already guessed I gave this book a very very emphatic 5 out of 5 stars because I loved it so damn much it absolutely lived up to the hype that I built for it myself and I've been recommending it to everyone. Then I ended up being on a weird contemporary kick where in the space of two days I finished two contemporaries which is just not me at all. <laughs> the day after I read The Boy Who Steals Houses which I read in one day I read Happy Girl Lucky by Holly Smale which I kind of wasn't sure what to expect. I never read the geek girl books growing up although I always kind of wanted to but I got a proof of this at work and I had to grab something quickly on my way to work that day where I was going to be at an event and I was going to have a lot of time to read and I saw this so I was like well, I'll just take it it'll be something like light and mindless that I can just get through because I should read it and I ended up loving this so much so this follows a family called the Valentines who are kind of almost Kardashian-esque in their fame with a lot more class <laughs> and a little bit more actual ability they they're English and they come from quite like a prestigious acting dynasty like their grandmother is an absolute icon in my mind if they ever well in my mind I was imagining her as Maggie Smith and if they ever make a movie of this I really just want her to be Maggie Smith because she would be perfect so this deals with Hope who is the youngest daughter she's 15 but the Valentines have a very strict rule no fame and no partying until you turn 16 and Hope is just not on board with this she thinks it's very unfair she's ready to be a star she keeps telling her siblings that they're just lucky that she isn't 16 yet because she's gonna outshine all of them like when they go out in public her head gets covered with a sweater because no one can know who she is until she turns 16 and yeah hope is just she's she's ready to be a star and then she meets a boy of course and they have like a whirlwind two-week romance while he's on holiday in the uk and when he goes back she feels like her life is over so she follows him back to America to stay with her dad who's a very famous movie director I can't tell you much more without spoiling too much of the plot but that is hope in a nutshell all she wants is love and she will go to any length to get it this book I really wasn't expecting to enjoy as much I thought it was going to be max like a three star read I thought I was going to read it because I was stuck with it at work with nothing else to read but I raced through this, I enjoyed it so much, it made me laugh, it made me sad. Hope is such a little ray of sunshine, she can be super annoying at times. On the whole this book was just so funny and so happy. Even in the midst of heartbreak there were all these rays of like goodness. One of the things that really stood out to me about this book is that Hope actually reads like a 15 year old. One of the complaints that we keep having about YA is that they're 30 year olds stuck in like 16 year olds bodies but Hope actually reads like a 15 year old she's super immature she has very crazy ideas about things she <laughs> struggles with vocabulary a bit sometimes she's quite ditzy but there was never a moment where I didn't believe that she was 15. I feel like for a lot of 15 year old girls if their summer holiday ended or if their summer romance ended and they had the opportunity to follow that person back to America like they had the money and the access to things like air travel that Hope has. I feel like a lot of girls would be crazy enough to do the same thing. When you're that young and that hopelessly in what you think is love, I can fully see a situation where that happens. It just, if you're looking for something that's really, really happy and feel good and just is gonna put a smile on your face, I highly recommend this. I also wanna say I love the message of self-love in this book. For so much of the book, Hope is just searching for other people's approval and searching for other people to love her and she goes on such a journey of self-discovery and realizes that she doesn't need other people's opinions to define her her worth doesn't come from other people knowing who she is or from being famous or from a boy loving her her value comes from her and she can be whatever she wants to be not what other people are going to let her be so on the whole this is just such a lovely feel-good book with an excellent message this is one of the best teen books I've read in a very long time just with regard to like the message that it portrays and the way it portrays characters I thought it was absolutely excellent and I gave it four out of five stars then the last three books that I read I said seven at the beginning of the video but it's actually only six that I'm talking about 
were the Hunger Games trilogy which I listened to the audiobooks of. So these I'm not going to talk a whole lot about because I do want to do a video where I talk about rereading the Hunger Games as an adult but I just want to say I really enjoyed them. I gave them four out of five across the board. I really enjoyed my experience of listening to them. The audiobook narrator I think is Cora McCormick or Cara McCormick something along those lines and she was really good. She really made an effort to bring each character to life although it was a single cast audiobook like it was just her. Um, she really made an effort with each of the characters and gave them really distinctive voices. I always knew exactly who was talking and she has a very pleasant voice to listen to so yeah, content-wise, I'll be doing another video on that, but the actual audiobook is really good as well, and I highly recommend it. So those are six books that I read recently. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of them, what your thoughts are. Otherwise, just other things that you've read recently. I'm always looking for new recommendations. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, once again, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye! My life is grounded.